Wait, stop. Before you sell your house, these are five questions that you must ask your listing agent. Hi, my name is Sean Slaughter, real estate agent and investor. And today I want to help you by giving you five very, very important questions you should ask your listing agent. When working with an agent, you should do what you do with most things. Research, look them up, check out their website, check out their webpage, check out their reviews. Do your due diligence so that when that agent sits down and you have that conversation about listing your house, you'll have these five questions armed and ready. And hopefully they can answer these questions to your satisfaction. Question one, what is the home selling process? The thing that I hear from people many, many times after they've purchased a house or sold the house is, oh, I didn't know that. Or after the transaction, oh, I found that out. Or my agent didn't tell me this. Or my agent didn't tell me that. Your agent should be a teacher. They should be a coach. They should be a confidant in the sense of whatever you tell them that is personal to you, they store and they keep. They should be able to walk you through the entire process so that after they do their presentation, you have more answers than questions. A real estate transaction is a really, really complicated process. Never underestimate the process. There are so many pieces and variables and your agent should give you an overall presentation of all those pieces and variables of the contract. And then as you go through the transaction, remind you step by step by step, here's where we are and here's where we're going. So if your agent does not do listing appointments or if your agent doesn't do a listing appointment well to walk you through the process, mm -mm, not a good one. Question number two, how did you arrive at this listing price? So you've chosen the agent and now you're talking about how to price your home. The one thing I don't want you to do is to allow an agent to fool you with an enormous price, all right? Ask your agent to prove, show you how they came up with this price. Of course, we all wanna sell our homes for the super, super max top, top, top value. But the reality is, if you're dealing with a buyer that's getting a loan, that loan company is gonna send out an appraiser. That appraiser is gonna determine the value of the home. And based on that value is the amount of money the loan company will give the buyer. So if the loan company pre-approves the buyer for 240 and the appraiser goes out and says, and you put in an offer for a house for 240, but the appraiser goes out and says, uh, this house is worth 230, then as a seller, you're going to have to lower your price to 230. So allow the agent to justify their price. This is generally done through what's called a competitive market analysis. They look at the market, they look at homes that have sold within the last, let's just say three months within a mile or less from your house that are similar to your house. And generally those prices are the most recent prices. And so your house should sell similarly to what those homes sold for, give or take features that your house may have or may not have. Your agent should also walk you through what happens if somebody just jumps out the window and offers you 20 grand over the price of your house, knowing that that house is not worth that price. They should have the conversation with you about guaranteeing the appraisal. If your agent is not talking to you about guaranteeing the appraisal, run. If that house is 240 and somebody offers 260, but the appraiser says that it's only 240, if the buyer within the purchase agreement has agreed to guarantee the appraisal, then what they're saying is, if the house comes back at 240, but we're offering 260, I'll make up the difference of the appraisal up to 260. If your listing agent does not understand what that means, run. Question number three, how much will I make? You should ask your agent, how much will you make? And it should be written down. Typically, this is done with a net sheet. So I have a net sheet that's pretty much already pre-filled. And so as I punch in the purchase price number, it auto generates your closing costs and you know, which pretty much are your realtor fees. And it also has other different things in there, different fees that they may ask for. Your agent should provide you a net sheet. I like to share my net sheet through Google Drive so that as different offers come in, I have different 
uh, columns where I can say here's offer one, offer two, offer three, offer four, offer five. Here's how much they're offering. And then it all auto calculates. So you can say, well, this is how much you're going to get once you sell this house. Question number four, how will you market the home? Now, the great thing that agents have is we have the MLS. So all agents are gonna post your home on the MLS. If they don't, that's a problem. And then real estate web aggregators that basically are websites that just aggregate listings will take that listing from the MLS and show it to everybody, right? But additionally, does your agent have a web presence? Do they have an Instagram presence or a Facebook presence or a TikTok presence where they can also put this house out and people that know their real estate agents because they're active on the internet will begin sharing your house. So I'll put the house on the MLS and it'll aggregate to all the other websites. But because I'm constantly putting out videos and I have a web presence as a real estate agent, when I put it on my website or I put it on my Instagram, it will get shared by those who are interested. It is a um, an MLS of social media, all right? If your real estate agent doesn't have an internet presence in 2022, I might run. Last question, question number five. How will we determine the best offer? Let me give you a little secret. The highest price is not always the best offer. A couple examples. What if you have an offer for 250 and an offer for 260? The offer for 250 is all cash. The offer for 260 is a loan. The offer for 250 allows you to close within two weeks. The offer for 260 will take the traditional you know, 45 days to close. Which one is better? Well, it all depends on you know what you as the seller want. But I'll tell you what, there is less chance that um, a loan will get denied with the cash offer because there is no loan. It's cash, baby. On the other hand, the other offer is 10 grand more, but who knows what will happen? Who knows what the appraisal will come back at? With a cash offer, there is no appraisal because there's no bank, all right? There just may be a home inspection or a due diligence period where they can do their inspections. So that's something to think about. Additionally, when it comes to an offer, who is the lender? The lender is very important. Typically, we like using local lenders because they're more nimble and quick and they can move. And we don't like using the huge, big branch lenders that do everything. They do, they do mortgages, they do savings accounts and checking accounts, or they're, they got commercials all over the TV. No, we like using local lenders because their customer service is generally impeccable. Plus, they're small enough to where I can contact and talk to them on a Saturday or a Sunday where with some of these big, huge brand lenders and banks, once five o'clock comes on a Friday, I can't contact them or reach them until nine o'clock on Monday. Additionally, you wanna look at the terms of the deal. What is the closing date? Can one lender close faster than another lender? You wanna look at the closing costs. Is the buyer requesting closing costs from the seller? Or is the buyer gonna pay all of their closing costs? What about home inspection? Is the buyer asking for a typical, traditional home inspection? or are they asking for a home inspection just for informational purposes only? These are little different things that once you add up can equal a fantastic offer or a, eh, that's okay offer. So it's not always price. It's generally these three to four to five things that come together to make a fantastic offer. Because here's the thing, you need that buyer to be able to close. You don't need them to be rejected. You wanna make sure that they have enough money in the bank, all that type of stuff. You wanna make sure they can close. That's the most important thing. So ask your agent, how do we determine the best offer? If all they say is, we're looking for the best price, pew. Well, that's it. If you have any other questions that you think that sellers should be asking their listing agent, post it in the comments. I would love to hear from you. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and karate chop that bell. Motivators, I love you guys. This is the House of Motivation, the place where inspiration lives.